Hi, and welcome to How to Connect with Men by Being Your Confident Sensual Self. Today I have Patty Contenta from SensualitySecrets.com. And Patty is an expert in helping women overcome struggles with their body image as well as connecting with their confident, beautiful, sensual selves. So thanks for being on the show today with me, Patty. Thanks for having me, Matthew. This will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so you came from the Arthur Murray Studio uh, Dance Studios. You were a dancer as well as an owner. What kind of inspired you to go from a, a dancer and an owner to helping women express their sensuality? It was a divorce, if I can be so blunt, <laughs> but uh, it was a time when I was married for about five years in the last probably year and a half or so. It was a difficult time in our relationship and um, ended up finding out that my uh, husband at the time was having an affair and it, it kind of really devastated my, my sense of uh, well-being, my confidence, my self-esteem in that moment, everything that I thought I was was now gone. You know, I mean, there were there were feelings along the way, and I was constantly reaching out to try to find out. But in the end, you know, it, it hit me like like a you know a brick wall. And um, after that time, I really went on a journey to try to figure out why this happened. You know, I mean, I thought I was a pretty smart, intelligent woman, and I and I felt like I was someone that was confident and sensual. But I know I was that way very much on the dance floor and, and to, to gain back my self-esteem and my confidence that was the one area in my life where I knew I owned it and I said what if during this turmoil time that I'm going through self-reflection and, and seeing therapists and, and trying to get through this what if I use the one place I knew I was most confident in in my everyday life to kind of gain back this whole I am beautiful I do feel good about myself I can start dating again and not wonder that every guy I meet is gonna cheat on me etc so I needed to get back in the dating game and I used uh, my journey of of um, you know still trying to heal but at the same time my my dance career and everything that I had learned there to kind of get attractive again and and that's how it kind of st got started and I realized it was working and quite well actually so I was like wow that's pretty good and so it just started to that kind of validation that I am beautiful and I'm pretty and I can get attention from anyone was kind of helping build my confidence again all right so um you know, one of the things that I think is is kind of fascinating about the the whole uh, coming from the space of of dance is that uh, so well, one of the things we were just talking about and uh, um, for those who uh, if you're watching right now you probably know me at least a little bit know a little bit about my background but I used to be a men's dating coach and and the first time I actually heard about Patty was back in. Geez, I think it was 2006, and uh, I watched this interview of hers, and it actually kind of inspired me to go out and uh, get involved in dance. And and so I I actually became a swing dancer and spent a couple years studying and and practicing um, swing dancing. And it really taught me a lot about myself. It taught me about kind of the uh, how like it was kind of like this metaphor for how to be in a relationship and and how to be a, a masculine presence in a relationship so I just want to thank you for that um, and also uh, so can we talk a little bit about what uh, sensuality is what what is this uh, what what does sensuality look like what what um, uh, you, you know, I, I know a lot of times people kind of get it mixed up with the idea of sexuality. So, so what's the difference there? Cool. Before I answer that, yay! You started dancing. That's amazing. I think every man that you know takes the leap and and learns to dance, I have like a soft spot. I mean, I see it in my studio when they walk in. I'm like, I'm gonna help you. Don't you worry. You know, uh, because there, there's a stigma sometimes attached to that, and and they have to fight all of that. So there's the discomfort of being in an awkward. Um, situation because they're out of their element and it takes a lot of courage and bravery to kind of say you know what I'm gonna do this but it's amazing what you gain from it after right so I'm so happy that you you took the plunge and, and that I was able to kinda put a little plant a little seed in your mind about that so yay <laughs> 
That's great. Uh, so now to answer your question on sensuality and the meaning, um, the definition, if you will, and I've defined it as as two parts for me. One of the one of the parts is is truly having the ability to elevate the senses. So when everybody talks about being present, for me, one of the ways to be present is really uh, tapping into my senses in different moments, whether it's through the food that I'm eating, the music that I'm listening to, if I'm smelling something, uh, if I'm watching something, it's really trying to be completely in that moment. So one is the ability to elevate the senses, and two is really the ability to also manage your sexual energy. Now this does not mean sexuality or having sex, it's really that, that part of us where we feel aroused by by someone or by something if you will by someone I should say so and there's nothing wrong with with knowing how to turn that up or down so it's truly the ability to use that sexual energy in a way that's appropriate for your context and and for the person that you're with so uh, I find it's those two things it's really elevating the senses and managing and using your sexual energy so is this something that a woman has to kind of uh, be careful about because she doesn't want to send the wrong signals? Is it, um, is it something that she should just uh, openly um, uh, kind of develop and flaunt her sensuality? How, how does this work? You bring up a good point because one of the common sort of um, um, difficulties that women you know, share with me is exactly that. Is is they're fearful of of two things: of one, creating some sort of sexual advances, or allowing the man to have sexual advances when they're not ready, and and they don't want to be seen as cheap or vulgar, and they want to end up being respected for their mind, not just their body. So what they've done sometimes is shut off that side of them because. I don't want him to think that I just want to have sex with him, that it's okay for him to ask. And two, you know, I, I want to be respected for more than just my body. And granted, I, I get that, but not to the to the point where you shut that off. So now you don't flirt, and so you turn off your sexual energy, and then you become, you know, you you, you you're you're not in their radar. And in the end, at the at at the beginning level there's still some of that that needs to be present in order to create polarity where a man sees you as this woman that can bring him pleasure because in the end we're still those kind of beings you have to be able to show a part of that but the beauty of sensuality for me is that it's about being subtle it's not about being obvious it's not necessarily you can show cleavage like you don't have to it's really your your decision but it's not necessarily because of the cleavage that means you're a sensual woman it's the way you carry yourself it's the way you hold yourself and the way you move your body in a way that's that's not angular and stiff which is much more masculine that is more flowy and and has curves and angles and how you show up in that manner that has nothing to do with being sexual so so I usually teach women about being aware of their body and how they show up in this physical manner that is subtle that is inviting but not overtly sexual okay so a lot of women in our community they have a issue with um, a lot of them are professionals and and they spend a lot of time in this masculine world where they need to be very uh, focused and driven and you know all these different things that uh, you know in in the workspace a lot of it really is kind of uh, masculine driven um, what are some things that they could do to kind of initially tap into that feminine sensual part of themselves okay Great. So um, one is literally if they become aware of, of when they stand or they walk. There's a difference between um, a more masculine sense of standing and walking and a more feminine way of doing it. So uh, I make them become aware and I do this in my dance coaching and, 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 in, and when I'm helping them through sensuality secrets in, in just showing up in the world. Uh, become aware, one example of, of, uh, of a tool that I teach them is inner thigh awareness. And I, I give them different tools specifically because I, before I actually teach this or explain this to you, okay, because I, 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 I want to mention that being in your masculine energy in today's world is sometimes, is ultimately necessarily because it's related to productivity and we're rewarded for being productive and creating, you know, meeting deadlines. But throughout our day as women, we have to recognize 
transitions. And transitions are those moments that are just a few seconds that you're walking from your desk to the ladies' room, that you're walking from the car to get your coffee. You know, those are seconds, those are moments, and those are, for me, transitions. So will you use these transitions or when you're having a conversation on the phone, are you perhaps creating a different, you know, how are you standing or sitting in that position where you're embodying a little bit more or nurturing more of your feminine essence and your sensuality. So you have to recognize that it's not just in your dating life and your personal life, it's throughout your day, how do you nourish this part of you. So transitions is key. So one of the ways that you want to use your transitions is what I call, a transition tool is what I call inner thigh awareness. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this already in your dancing, but there's a way that a woman would move compared to a man that would move. And a man is much more, um, if I think about dancing, or in everyday life, a masculine man has a certain presence where he takes up more space. So his legs are a little bit more wider apart. You know, he his chest is a little bit more present because he's there to protect her space and take care of her in this craziness of the world or a dance world. A woman wants to create an inviting environment, so her way of moving is is more subtle and is 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 uh, I'll say. Uh, more condensed because she's not there to challenge you she's there to invite you in closer so the way she uses her legs which are not wide apart which is a little bit closer where the knee maybe crosses over the other knee where there's an inner thigh awareness so when you walk with inner thigh awareness when you sit with inner thigh awareness there's a different way of moving compared to I never say that to a guy. He just shouldn't, because he'll show up softer, nothing wrong, or, or or more feminine, if you will. So, and it's not as attractive. If we're talking about the ultimate attraction of the physical attraction of masculine and feminine, so that is one way where I will show them about inner thigh awareness, where there is a feeling of. I'm not talking about the supermodel walk, but when you walk and just know, when you sit and just feel that. If you even just attempt it to sit right now, Matthew, and feel your inner thighs, so you bring them in closer together, you would feel more feminine, <laughs> okay, as compared to sitting with your legs apart. And I think women don't realize that throughout their day, they start adapting the masculine way of moving because that's what's what is much more in line with productivity. And so you kind of do that all the time and not realize that, wait a second, I can still be productive or I can still walk and nurture my feminine spirit by being aware of one thing is my inner thighs, for example. Great. Yeah, and, and one of the things that um, really kind of uh, got my attention when I was when I was spending a lot of time dancing. I don't I don't dance nearly as much anymore, but uh, w was just kind of the posture that we had, you know, and putting your, you know, your shoulders back and your chest out, and and it was it was almost like this thing where I it, it immediately put me into this confident state, you know, the state mm. where I was uh, I I just felt more present, more. Uh, more ready to handle anything that was in front of me, which is one of the reasons why I think I I got so uh, in interested in it in the first place was because I, I I it changed how I felt so dramatically so quickly um, just by changing my body posture that that it really uh, um, it it really took my interest. So, um, what are some things that women can do if they're kind of uh, a little intimidated or or um, uh, afraid of, of maybe being more sensual, uh, how can they get more confident about uh, uh, about doing this, about feeling this way, about uh, um, uh, about doing this around men? Mm. You know, how could they feel more comfortable? So one of the tools, like I mentioned, is the inner thigh thing, but part of it is, you know, confidence, for me to become confident in anything that I did, and and I really had to adapt, you know, three different things. One is d preparation, which was me, which was doing the research and gaining the tools that I needed to learn in order to to have a way to get to this this new way of being. So ITA is one of them. I have several, but you know, about self touch and about leaning back in your posture. So and we can go into those later. But what it's one is doing the research to find out what are the tools that I need to start getting more confident. And, and 
just so we know confidence sometimes is more related to our external way of being but inevitably as we gain the wisdom through through you know reading the right books through feeding our minds through learning the techniques or tools all this external will inevitably influence our internal which is our self esteem so so it's okay to learn to grab at the external in order to eventually it becomes where you where you radiate confidence from within a core confidence so you get those external so prepare preparation is find the tools that you need that are in line that you feel good with that you say I can I can learn this so whatever these tools are then the second part of that of that equation is about practicing them and the practice is recognize like in learning to dance or any new skill you're gonna go through awkward moments you're gonna go through this this feels so not part of me like how come I have, I have to think about this I have to think about my inner thighs I have to think about my back muscles I have to create a curve I have to you know what is that I think it's not as complicated as we make it, but it's not ev it's not always evident for us because it's not a thing that we practice. It's that simple. So we need to recognize that part of practicing means it's going to be awkward. And then ultimately is the courage. That's the last part of sort of the formula, if you will. It's the courage to say, I'm going to do this every time I, I'm out there because, or I'm walking or I'm sitting or I'm having a conversation. Because when it counts the most, which is with that person that you're so in touch with, that you say, oh my God, I really like this person. You want it to feel so natural. And for it to be natural, you want to be able to practice it where you're not thinking about it so so confidence is a skill like anything else in a way that you need to kind of practice prepare for it what are the ways that you're going to do that so that when it comes in those moments where you have to speak where you have to be with someone you just know how to, it takes you just a few seconds to get there instead of you know two hours of preparation so so understand that this is a natural way, that's a natural course of learning anything, of developing any kind of skill, of, of trying to gain any kind of confidence in anything. It's going to require preparation, practice, and ultimately the courage to actually do it. And, and so it's a normal thing that you're going to go through these, you know, it doesn't feel right. It's okay. You know, it didn't feel right for me either when I started. I was a tomboy for crying out loud. You know, in school, when you do the prince, you know, you have the, the prince, the king, the queen. I went for Joker and I won. I beat the guys. I was the Joker of the high school, not the queen or the princess. I was a total tomboy. You know, so I, I wasn't like this when I started, you know. It was really through you know continuously working on my dancing in other parts of my life in order to now embody it more yeah so uh, that's that's um, <clears throat> that was really good I um, just to kinda emphasize a couple points you just said one is this whole idea of you know it doesn't it doesn't it's not gonna initially feel like you and and I run into that a lot of times is um, a lot of people uh, especially women um, in our community will think that maybe doing something different than what they've always been doing might not might not be them right or or that it's um, uh, somehow not spontaneous or not being themselves to uh, to to learn how to do something different but it one of the analogies that I give is this uh, this idea of like you know when you learned how to drive a car you know that doesn't mean that when you're driving a car now that you're not being yourself or that you know when you're uh, when, when you learn how to cook all of a sudden when you're cooking it means that you're not being yourself it, it's just it's a part of it's a way to um, kind of pull out this different part of yourself so that you can create the results that you want to have in your life and and the other part that I really wanted to emphasize about what you said was the whole idea of uh, confidence taking time and and um, you know one of the things that I've learned just about confidence in general is that uh, confidence is built through being skillful at anything so the more skillful you are the more you practice something the more you will be confident at anything so if you don't feel like you're confident right now that's that's actually normal that's like <laughs> that's to be expected and it's going through that and just continually doing it over and over and over again until you start to feel that confidence in it which comes from competence um, so let's uh, go in another direction here so how do you take that uh, all these things that we've been talking about and and uh, 
kind of this, you know, having your thighs touch and, and feeling that and becoming present to it. Um, how do you attract a man with these things? So, so um, the idea of that is ultimately these tools, so, you know, I'll, I'll give you another one as an example uh, when I get to it, but ultimately these tools is we want to be able in our day-to-day -day life where most of the time as women I know it I'm an entrepreneur I have like three literally three businesses I have a dance studio I consult I'm traveling all the time and I have my online business so Patty is rarely in the okay I'm just gonna go off for a walk and smell the roses I, I'm rarely in that place so I need this more than ever because then when I get to my relationship really it's a conscious shift it's not like it's just gonna come to me now that I know this, I say I have to shift because I have to switch my energy because with him, I don't want to stay in this place because I want to be cherished. I want to be held. I want to be vulnerable. I want to be soft. Even if I already know how to get there by myself, I want him to help me get through that. So I make a conscious shift. Like it's really... It, it does, it's just like, oh, it's just going to show up. It doesn't, you know, because literally I practice everything else. I'm in my masculine more often than I'm in my feminine. Thank God I dance. Like, it helps me, you know, that much more. But I'll tell you, you know, if I literally look at the percentage of my day, what energy I'm in, I'm much more in my masculine, without a doubt. And I know that this is most women. And so... Um, the reality of, of needing to transition to this and be aware that this has to be a constant practice is key because it, it doesn't just show up because you're doing it. Um, so gosh, I, I kind of I went in a tangent there because you, you were so <laughs> making sense to me with the whole masculine thing and, and the confidence in practicing this. Your question was how can women practice this all the time, right? Just to keep me on track. My, my question was how can a woman take this and um, really attract a man with it? Like what, what specifically can she do to uh, be more attractive? Like, like how, how, does this, how does this fit into being attractive to men? So, so I'm going to talk about another one of my transition tools, and and I'll 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 talk about it because the idea of when we step into our feminine, um, I really feel when we go into our sensuality, our femininity, it's it's an energy that sometimes the masculine lacks, and it draws them in because it's we're sort of the the gateway to their heart and their emotions and the pleasure zone, pleasures, if you will. So when we learn to do this, we sort of inevitably draw them in because it's a part of them that they definitely will lack more because they don't practice it as much. Not that they couldn't do it on their own, they should too, but ultimately when we know that this is this is where our power lies, this is the reason why we do this so that we show up as more desirable, if you will. And ultimately, a woman that is more desirable is a woman that shows up with much, with much more choice. Now, does this mean you have to constantly switch from partner to partner? You do whatever you feel like doing. But ultimately, when you have more abundance and choice, you can then be in a position to choose someone that's in line with your values, that's willing to go through challenges of life and support you through life, instead of just settle for, well, he's the only one that's giving me attention. So, so the ultimate goal is that. You know? so, so a woman, for example, one of the things, one of, the other transition tool that I use is to teach them is about the lean back principle and the lean back principle comes again from from the idea of being able to melt into your feminine energy so when you're in a forward poise so I will show you a forward poise is here now this means when I'm here as a teacher or I'm having a conversation I'm much more motivational I'm into you and I say oh this is so cool and you need to do this I'm in a much more a directive style of communication when I sit back and I and I want to have a conversation and I want to create rapport and I want to be receptive and open to your presence, to your masculine presence, I tend to lean back. So it changes the way I use my communication, uh, my tone. It's slower. It, it tends to be in a more listening, attentive, receptive way of being. So I physically do this when I'm with my man because uh, not doesn't mean I never lean in, but I do this to help me transition. Okay, let me melt. I need to melt in his presence. I need to start showing another side of me. And I need to appreciate his masculine gift because in the end when I do, he shows up much more of a, you know, 
um, the way I like him to show up, which is let me take care of you, you know, and I want to be taken care of in that moment, you know, because I know I could do by myself, but I'd rather not, you know. So I use my physicality in the lean back principle to to change my energy, to go from a doing poise of being active and taking care of things to a more receptive poise to say, you know, let me be open to who you are, let me hear you differently, and please come into my vulnerability because I need you right now, which is different. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And in, in fact, I, I think that that um, that idea can be expanded a lot because it's uh, it, it's so kind of core and important to uh, some of the things that, um, as far as like a man, you know, a, a man wants to wants to be able to come in and be a man. He wants to be able to come in and take care of things and feel like he's that masculine presence in your world and so if he comes in and he feels like he's not able to kind of take on that role um, he he's probably gonna end up leaving or he's going he's going to end up just kind of sitting back and letting you run things which which doesn't make him feel like he's invested in the relationship and and feeling like he's invested in the relationship one of the uh, the big complaints that I get from just about everybody and just about every woman I, I uh, talk to in the community is about men and uh, being commitment phobic and and it's not really necessarily that men are commitment phobic it's just that um, they're they're looking for certain things in a relationship to feel like they're really a part of it to feel like you know they know you to feel like they're in the relationship to feel like they're respected as a man um, and and in their masculinity um, and part of that is being able to come in and take a lead and take a role um, and if you're constantly kind of leaning forward and taking over everything and taking control of everything he's not going to feel like he can uh, take over that role and and it's it's going to be it's going to be difficult for him to feel like he wants to commit because he doesn't feel like he's really um, that he really has a space to be in that relationship and I like I like what you talked about before with the whole inviting him in you know it kind of like comes back to this like leaning back and inviting him in um, that that really makes a lot of sense to me and so um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about flirting I know that you've got some uh, uh, some cool flirting ideas um, how, how can a woman flirt without seeming like she's being kind of um, overwhelming or, or, or too much for a guy Cool. And before I go into the flirt, I just want to add to what you were saying before in the sense that, you know, I always go go back to the idea of it's not that this is the old, this is the true basics of a strong basis of a strong relationship, meaning uh, you know, if you stay in your feminine, he stays in his masculine, all is bliss and everything's wonderful. You know, I really don't want women to feel that way. The, 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 the goal of doing what I'm doing or sharing this with you is to allow them to Again, to be able to be in this in this possibility of receiving a man, of not necessarily having to to always be in the action mode, and it's hard because women have an internal clock that men don't always get. I just want to share that because we have the clock of if you want to have babies, there's the biological clock. As we age, we see our youthful physical thing that's disappearing, and it puts it scares the shit out of us. So. Those two things are like burning underneath every within every woman. And and so I really hope that the idea of being sensual and feminine will make them see that they can be attractive in a different way. And then ultimately the right person, the right person. So as she's going through this and she learns to be feminine and sensual, I think the right person will will be able to to really be in vibe with you on, on your values and recognize that you're having a hard time and I'm going to be there with you. And he's not going to run away and, and at, at the first sight of difficulty. So that's another thing about relationships. But at least at the first, at uh, within that level, because it takes time to do that, just to share that within my own relationship, 
like it doesn't happen in seconds that uh, that you know he sees my sensual feminine spirit that's leaning back and yes he's showing it doesn't happen right away like I know this so I take the time it might take a full hour or so or or more and then suddenly the vibe sets in so to be patient with that because sometimes we have this sense of urgency well I did do the lean back and I did that and he still wasn't open to it he's going through his stuff that he doesn't, you know, his his you know purpose, and I have to do this, and he's coming in, and he might not be receptive to you right away because of of everything that he's dealing with. So so allow for that time where it might not happen within the first few minutes or seconds, just to be patient with both parties. So when you're on dates or whatever they may be, it doesn't happen necessarily immediately. So that's why the lean back and the breathing through that, and know that give it time. I don't have to have an outcome right away. It it might just requires some moments of stillness to allow for some openness to, to show up so so that that sort of urgency that tends to be with every woman to kind of downshift on that a little bit because I know it's part of it and it's burning inside of us but the more we allow that to take over we still in our masculine so just on that note yeah and, and one thing I just wanted to add to that real quick because that, that's a really good point is that it's it's not just a you know masculine feminine type of duality there there's a the you know kind of the metaphor that we've been using is dance you know and it's kind of a dance you know and and it's feeling out your partner and it's and it's finding out where he is and 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 then kind of um reflecting what's going on you know with him with your own side of things you know and and I know plenty of people who um it, it's not always just this, you know, the guy's the most masculine and the woman's the most feminine. I know plenty of guys who who have different aspects of their personality are are definitely more feminine, and um, they kind of appreciate that masculine side of the woman that they're with, and and their relationships are are absolutely great and fine, and and they work um, because it's it's not necessarily just about you know you're a woman you need to be feminine and he's a guy so he needs to be masculine so I I just wanted to kind of add that onto it and um and and then back to what we were talking about with the flirting secrets because yeah. I I know you've got some great stuff and I'd love for you to share it with us sure sure so one of the things you know if we talk about flirting interestingly uh, also because you know the two again the two reasons that I talked about earlier some women resist the the importance of flirting because one they they don't want to you know invite sexual advances before they're ready and two they want to be respected for their mind not just their body so they tend to shut that side off but uh, for me flirting interestingly so what I did was just first let them know is show up first and foremost as a charismatic woman or as a charismatic person even if a man wants to flirt and then add a little sexual energy in there because there is a certain sexual energy to flirting but don't show up with sexual energy first show up with I want to be charismatic so so what is a charismatic person you know charismatic person is attentive um, they, they sort of observe details in a person so you know you, you recognize um, the shirt that he might be wearing, the watch that he's wearing, the features that he has, the fact that you have a little bit of a uh, what do you call that on a chin there? I, the word escapes me, but I always love that on a, on a, on a man's chin. And I first thing I noticed about you, I was like, oh, that's so hot, <laughs> you know. And and that you compliment a man on that because you're like, wow, that's I like that on you. It's not about your looks per se, but it's a feature that's everybody has a specific feature that makes them unique, so that you begin to pay attention to that and you give a compliment because. Compliment is a free gift, and and you mean it. You know that 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 makes that person unique. So so part of being charismatic is is the willingness to be attentive, to give a compliment, to to um, to almost uh, be playful in the sense of willing to be in the game with someone. You know, it it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm willing to play with you, and and that could mean word games. It could be about observing what's going on around you whatever that may be so just be willing to be charismatic and then and and charismatic in the end is someone that leaves you feeling better about themselves and leaves you feeling better about me so in this conversation hopefully you'll 
come across as feeling better about who you are, Matt, and I'll feel better about myself because I, you know, I know I can give this to you. So, so that's what charismatic engagement kind of is. And then the flirting part is that sexual energy that you can kind of dab in. So, and I say this because I needed to practice this. When I was in my transition of, of trying to gain my self-esteem back, I went on dates by myself, meaning personal dates. I used to go to restaurants and sit at the, the, the bar by myself and say, I'm going to learn to kind of create conversations with people, to kind of be charismatic in this, and you know. And then ultimately, if, if it was right to add a little dab of flirting in there, just because I needed to to build that skill so that when it showed up in, in other aspects, whether it was men in my life or I was trying to be on a date, it felt more natural. So I, I really say women should be able to do this even on their own, you know, when there is no guy necessarily around where you're trying to pick him up or trying to call attention to him so, so that it becomes more natural. So one of the other tools that I've talked about, um, so now I'm going to go into a flirting tool, is self-touch. Um, this, you know, I have to tell you the story of how this really, which is tied into dancing, which really became important to me. Uh, I was on a coaching lesson with um, a man, uh, a coach. He's this guy. He's probably he was at the time, I think, in his sixties, easily. He had a cigar in, in his hand, and he had like a scotch in the other hand. And my partner and I are about to dance the rumba, and he had this like, you know, uh, really raunchy voice. He goes, "Okay, show me your rumba." And so here we are, we put the music and we start dancing. And probably within 10 seconds, 10, 20 seconds of me dancing, of us dancing, he goes to the music, stops, and he walks up to me, not up to my partner, and he says, Patty, do you love yourself? And I was like, uh, I think so. Yeah, I don't want to get into my personal stuff, but yeah, I do. Well, you could have fooled me. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, because a woman loves herself, loves how she feels, loves everything about herself, her body, you know, the curves on her body. You're not showing me that. You're just flailing your arms everywhere, and I don't know what to make of it. I was like, so what does that mean? So he goes, watch this. And then he puts on the music, and right in front of me, he turns into this feminine, sexy woman. And I was like, oh, my God, that was amazing. So here I am watching him and trying to differentiate what he actually physically did, and then I got it, I understood. So what he did was, he, he, lo he would always track his arm before it came out. So before it comes out, he would touch his body, and then he would lift it. He would caress his hair, get out to the side. He would touch the thigh, and then he brought it forward to his to, to my partner. He wouldn't just put an arm out. He wouldn't just move this way because that was very, again, external, masculine, take up space. A man should never do that. Remember, I'm inviting space. So here I am throwing my arms out but still not realizing I'm still being quite masculine in my movement. So the moment I started to track my arm before I moved, the moment I touched my lower back and I arched it a little bit, suddenly the movement was completely different, and I was much more sensual in the way I moved within my dancing. So I was like, oh, my God, i got to use this when I'm just sitting and having a conversation. So, yes, I will touch my shoulder, or I will caress my hair. And I do this because it helps me be more feminine, and it shows up much more inviting for him. So that is a, a sort of flirting tool, meaning... Yes, I will caress myself in a, on a regular basis because I know, one, it makes me feel more feminine, and I know what it does to the man. It shows up more pleasing for him. So that's another a flirting tool. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's absolutely true, Anne. <laughs> um, that, that was great. That was great. That was really, really great. Um, so, uh, so, uh, yeah. so that being said, Matthew, I just want to say, can you see now how it's not about the physical beauty? Like some of the women get caught up with that because they're not a size 8 or 6 and they're a size 10. Or, But really when a woman starts to embody this, it won't matter your physical size. The right guy that's attracted to your type, you'll have more men because there's this sensual confidence that shows up in this way of being that becomes more more attractive. So, you know, ultimately you want the kind of guy that's attracted to your body type, if you will, but you become much more attractive to probably more men if you start embodying this way of being. So there, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, and, and one thing I wanted to kind of add to that is just that, um, you know, <laughs> there's this kind of thought process in, in our in Western society that, you know, a woman has to have all these different things. And, and I think part of what really is confusing a lot of times is the idea that 
you know, this woman has to have all these different aspects of what different guys like, you know, so one guy likes, you know, might, might be a butt guy, you know, and he likes butts, so you're like, oh, well, I need to have the perfect butt, and then this other guy is a boob guy, and so you're like, oh, I need to have a perfect boobs, and then this other guy, is, you know, he likes skinny girls, and then this other guy likes women that are a little bit bigger, and so, you, like, a lot of the confusion, I think, that happens is is women will take just one aspect of each one of these things that these different guys likes and kind of apply it to themselves like their body will ever kind of look like whatever that is that mm. uh, gets mixed and mashed mashed together um, and and it won't you know and and uh, not every guy likes you know that kind of um, I don't know that that idea that uh, that magazine model kind of look. There's there's a lot of a lot of guys out there that are absolutely not interested in that at all. And when you, um, uh, you know, when when you become kind of confident in the way that you look and and start, um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, times uh, I get women that come to me and they're you know in their like early 30s and they're like oh I'm too old to ever meet a guy and and, it, and it's really not about you know your age or or any of that it's how you carry yourself it's it's how you feel about yourself you know when a, if a um if you're older and you feel young and you feel playful and you feel all these things and you express that in your communication it's very attractive to men you know it's it's not just this whole thing where you have to um, you have to be young and you have to be a size zero or whatever you know there, there's this whole um, energy about you that that's really attractive to men and so um, the, the other th point that I wanted to kind of make about this is just that um, this whole thing is it's not like a this whole flirting thing isn't like a one and done type of thing like oh I just need to go out there and flirt one time with a guy you know this is a very very important skill to have you know every relationship that I've I've seen and I've I've studied a lot of relationships um, and the people who uh, stay together and grow old together and really love each other and have amazing relationships um, it's not that they don't fight or, or they don't have conflict or you know there aren't disagreements. It, it's that they um, they still create that loving space. They still create that flirting environment. You know every every couple that I've ever seen that stayed together and, and really um, had a great relationship. You know even late into their 70s and 80s, they were still flirting. When when you came and talked to them and and uh, you know they they're kind of like teasing each other and and you know making semi inappropriate comments with each other and and it's and it's that kind of a attitude that that really kind of keeps um, keeps two people feeling that connection and um, so I I just wanted to kind of emphasize that aspect of it because I, I think that this w the stuff that we're talking about right now is just so important for um, uh, forever really to, to be a part of something that that uh, allows you to express yourself um, in this really attractive way forever um, and and it'll definitely help you keep a man so um, let's take this down to the like total ground level here real quick and and so let's say that a woman's out right and and she's uh, she sees a guy that she likes what can she do to kind of get his attention um, but not seem kind of like desperate hmm. there's different things but ultimately you know one first and foremost I think eye contact is one of the things that most people are very uncomfortable with and especially the kind of extended eye contact where it's long enough so that he notices that you notice him and and that's one of the and, and you so you and you may need to do it on, on a few times you know some people say you gotta do it twice three times whatever it may be but ultimately that that constant eye connection from especially from a distance it's amazing if you just hold it you know like longer than two seconds and turn away like almost you know I've told myself uh, the phrase a little bit where I would look and I would say I see you do you see me 
and it makes me kind of grin a little bit, it has a kind of soft smile, and then continue and then do it again. I see you. Do you see me? Like a curious, like I'm curious about you. I'm interested in in that person that's there and in, in you, that what's within you. So you, you need to be able to first and foremost be comfortable with that. And today more than ever, we're in a digital age where most people's heads are on their phones, on, on some sort of smartphone, computer, iPad, whatever you want to, we're not even looking up. Like if you look around, it's crazy to see how many people are actually looking down. So you, you know, we're in a different time where this is even more necessary because no one's even taking the time to observe what's around them. So you, you have to almost be, this is where you need to be more in your masculine energy to kind of do this because it's lacking. It's, we're not even in a social environment where we used to be, where you could be sitting in a bar and not looking at your phone. We have conver You'll see couples together not even looking at each other. Like it's, it's kind of interesting to, to really observe and watch. I'll, do, I'll drive and I notice how people are not even looking at the, at the road. Like it's constant. So it's an epidemic, okay? Which means you have to really be able to take the time out to really start doing simple things like extended eye contact where you're observing and then you add a smile to that. So it lets the other person know once they do look, don't turn away. Stay at that place and say that, do you see me? I see you. And you smile. And then yes, you can turn away. And then you may need, you may need to do it two or three times because men have shared with me, like it's not just on the first time because I don't want to be rejected. When they have to do the walk towards you and then they risk having the walk of shame and where they have to go back because you might say no, it's the hardest thing that they have to deal with too, right? Men are, fear, are fearful of rejection as much as women are. So, so I need to do it two or three times and, and where I'm doing that. And sometimes I'll even start the conversation. You know, I've done that in the past where I'll observe something that he might be reading or that he might be looking at and make a comment where I'm going to start the conversation, you know, as a person that's curious about what he's doing or what he's looking at. And, and, you know, even if it just ends there, it gives me the courage each time to m maybe be the first one to have the conversation. I think today more than ever, it can't just be a question of sit back and he's going to show up. Like, it's not that simple. <laughs> like, you know, th there's got to be some sort of active slash passive active forms of, of inviting this type of um, man towards you. You can't just sit back and, and do this and, and that's all it's going to take. It, it, it requires a little bit more, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and and I just wanted to kind of uh, go off of that point because it's it's very very important, you know. And, and as a uh, as a man and as a uh, uh, former men's dating coach, um, that that was one of the biggest kind of frustrations that guys have is is just the entire approach thing. And and um, a lot of times I'll get women who will say things like. Um, you know, if, if he was really a man and he was really, you know, worth it, you know, he would come over, he would, you know, just kind of stomp right over and, and come and talk to me. And, and it's really um, a lot more complicated than that. I, uh, so I, I used to be in the military and when, when I got out of the military, I came back from Iraq, you know, and, and I was this soldier, you know, and I, I uh, came into the dating scene. It was, it was crazy because I'd go out and I would meet. I would see all these women that that I was really attracted to, and I knew that I need like it was my job. I have to go over there and talk to them, and I would find myself like walking over and then like freezing like halfway <laughs> over there, and uh, and then just like turning around and like walking back to where I was, <laughs> you know, hoping mm -hmm. that nobody saw me. And uh, you, you know, I, I remember going home at night and just sitting there and being like. Oh, you know, how am I this big bad soldier guy that goes to Iraq and like fights for the country and then I come back and it's like I'm scared to death of these little women that I see out in these, these bars and stuff that I go to and 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 it really is a frustrate really frustrating thing for a lot of guys and uh Anything that you can do, and, and in fact, um, you know, and, and I know I, I talk about this in, in some of my other materials, but, you know, the guys that approach like that just, you know, you see it, they see you and then they come over and, and start talking to you, those guys are not the best that it just because they approach you doesn't mean that they're the best quality of guys. In fact, the, the guys who, atten who tend to approach often are... 
uh, are the guys that are going to approach you, and, they, and they're 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 typically like players or they're guys who have been taught to approach because most guys they'll see you and then they get filled up with this feeling of anxiety and overwhelm and they're like they're just like looking for some kind of signal from you they they want to get a um, some kind of sign from you that says that that you know you're interested in them because they you know like you said they don't want to walk all the way over to the other side of the room you know say something to you realize that you're not interested in them and then have to go walking all the way back in shame um, mm. So, so anything that you can do to kind of invite him over, um, you know, or start the conversation, if if that's something that you want to do, is is really really beneficial. I think that you'll um, find that you open yourself up to this whole new realm of the types of men that you can get into conversations with, just because you're uh, change, you're doing something different. You know, most women aren't won't. Uh, do what we're talking about here. They won't invite a guy over. They won't go over and look him in the eyes and smile and or talk to him or any of that kind of stuff. So you you have this huge array of men that most women aren't even being able uh, don't even have a chance to go and talk to because they aren't willing to do these things. Um, so. Uh, if somebody wants to learn more about your stuff and, and find out more about you and, and what you're doing, where should they go? What should they do? Well, I have uh, two specific places. I might my, my site, as you mentioned earlier, sensualitysecrets.com, and there there's you know just general information, some videos about what I do. And then I, I, I am launching a new book very soon called desirableanddeserving.com, and, and um, that's going to have some video information. And uh, so, you know, check that out also because that'll be a great way to sort of get into my, my new book and a new video series about all of this uh, that we've been discussing today. And, and, and to be compassionate, you know, to add to that, just to, to finish on the note of the compassion part, you know, we're all doing our best to try to figure each other out, you know, and, and every time I hear this when a man's expressing all of this, even a man who said, you know, I just wanted to help her with this and, you know, right away she said, no, don't do this, I'm fine, you know, we don't even realize sometimes how even just allowing them to help us or asking for their help is a wonderful way to kind of be more in that receptive place where, you know, you want that person to be able to show up as a quote-unquote I'll say a hero for you, even if it is just picking up the grocery for you, or or you know help me with my with my luggage or whatever that may be. You want to get into the mode of practicing that, where because it does soften you, and and that's what we want to be able to do is to be able to soften in that space more often, you know. And and they might not get it right. We all don't always get it right, and and a sense of compassion along the way because we're human beings trying to figure all this stuff out. And I think the person that is most compassionate, where you could recognize who's being just rude, you, there's a difference and there's someone that's just kind of, ah, they're messing up a little bit, but they're doing their best and that's cute, you know, the A for effort, you know, f for me anyway, so, so that's it. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely>. so, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I <laughs> yeah, you know, um, just, just to add to that real quick is, is, uh, you know, a lot of times, um, uh, women will kind of brush a guy off because uh, because of something real small and little that he does you know and, and um, it's important to remember that we're all, we're all human you know and, and we're all just doing our best out there you know stumbling around the world figuring things out and making things up as we go um, so uh, it's important to kind of be compassionate and, and to be forgiving and uh, you know allow allow guys to do things that uh, um, that that might be a mistake here and there once in a while. Mm. Um, so thanks a lot for being on the show today, Patty. Uh, your information is fantastic, and and uh, I love everything about what you do and uh, who you are. And uh, um, you know, it's it's been an honor to have you on the show today. So thanks for being with us. Thank you, Matthew. That was very sweet of you, and I appreciate that. You're a wonderful interviewer, and and I'm glad we kind of went through this. And hopefully, your women will have some tools that they can they can use, and and you know, feel a little bit more. Um, playful in this in this world of sensuality and femininity so thanks for for sharing this with your women thank you so much yeah you're welcome and if you're watching or listening right now um, I will speak with you again soon